if we create a computer generated design, we can either use D optimal or I optimal optimization criteria. So what is the difference? We usually classify designs as either screening designs or response surface designs. Using this terminology, then a D-optimal would be used for screening designs and an I-optimal would be used for response surface designs. So that tells you how to use them, but it doesn't tell you why. What I want to do is try and explain the why through a couple of different examples. So let's take a closer look. Here I have a design specification. I have five factors. And what I'm looking at doing is just estimating their main effects. So I'm setting up a screening experiment. I'm taking 12 runs and what I can do is generate a D-optimal design, but I can also change the criteria and generate an I-optimal design for the same problem specification. So let's take a look at the analysis of these data so we can understand what the differences are. Here I have the models on the left hand side, the model for the D-optimal design, on the right hand side, the model for the I-optimal. Now, when we're creating a screening design, our main focus are on the parameter estimates. So let's take a closer look at those. And first, let me focus on the D-optimal design. And I want to draw your attention to these standard errors. You see all of those standard errors are the same number. That's, that's a clue that we're working with a designed experiment. And what the D-optimal design will try and do is to minimize those standard errors and keep them uniform across all the parameter estimates. Now let's compare that with the I-optimal design. And again, we see uniform standard errors, but they're not as small. And depending on the configuration of the design, we may not be able to achieve uniform standard errors across all of the parameters. And if that is the case, then what you're going to find is that the D-optimal design would do a better job of keeping those numbers uniform. So the D-optimal design is focused on creating small standard errors and uniformly small across all of the parameter estimates. Now let's take a look at an alternative problem specification where I just have three factors and I'm now going to build a response surface model. So I have all the two factor interactions and the quadratic terms. For this design, I'm going to take 15 runs and I can create the design based on either a D-optimal criteria or the I-optimal criteria as you see for these two designs here. I'm going to go for the same process of build the models, but this time when I'm model building, I'm trying to explore the response surface. So I can represent the response surface as a prediction profiler and just focus on the I-optimal design on the right hand side. And you'll notice that you have very narrow confidence intervals in comparison with the model on the left hand side. And let's try and put some numbers on those. We have an interval there from the lower to upper confidence interval of 0.13, whereas on the left-hand side, it's 0.33. So it's substantially larger on the left-hand side. So the I-optimal design is trying to keep these confidence intervals as small as possible. If you look more closely, you'll also see there's a bit of a bulge in the center of that confidence interval for the D-optimal design. It's actually wider. So this design does a poorer job of making predictions in the center of the design space. And ideally you'd think it should be the best place to make predictions. Now this difference isn't huge, but there's probably a 10% variation for this particular design from the low to high. And so if I just emphasize this concept, there's a bulge in the center area of that confidence interval. Whereas on the I-optimal design, it's trying to not only get the confidence interval narrow, but it's making it uniformly narrow. So now we can compare the two different designs. For I-optimal, we are trying to achieve a small and uniform prediction confidence interval. Whereas for D-optimal, what we're trying to do is generate a small standard error across all of the parameter estimates. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.